if you look over the last many decades, uh, one of the worst social trends uh, has been the decline of fatherhood. And we do have, in many instances, a, a fatherhood crisis in this country. Uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, when you take kids that do not have a father present during their upbringing, the chance of them dropping out of school, uh, getting involved in trouble with the law, having other difficulties increases dramatically. Uh, and I think it's been very, very obvious uh, that when fathers are present, when they're uh, serving a productive, helping to, to keep their kids in line when, uh, when they're not. My job isn't to undermine the importance of having a father in your life. We know what it means and how it impacts your home. But what we ain't gonna do is lie. I'll get to that in a minute. Governor Ron DeSantis signed a new law into effect putting funding behind pro-fatherhood efforts and initiatives. The bill, HB 7065, intends to support fathers and encourage active participation in their children's lives. This bill will provide $70 million in funding for family and youth support through the Department of Children and Families and the Department of Juvenile Justice, in addition to helping incarcerated fathers to transition out of jail and into employment. Cool. Sounds good. I mean, I would also appreciate it if Governor DeSantis released all of the prisoners who are locked up due to low-level drug offenses. Most of them are black men. America, what's the point in putting black men away on fallacious charges, then asking, where are black fathers? Anyways, other programs supported include All Pro Dad, a nonprofit foundation that focuses on fatherhood education and resources to help fathers connect with their children, which was started by former Super Bowl winning head coach, Tony Dungy, who also expressed gratitude for the bill and its ability to help fund programs such as his. I know this bill was signed at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers facility, a team he used to coach for, and his program is definitely involved in this, but I still don't know why Tony Dungy was there. He has so many past toxic, inconsistent statements about black men, but I won't drag him for it today. During Ron DeSantis' press conference, Dungy apparently asked Abe Brown, how do these young boys, 19, 20, 21 years old, get in prison? And he told Dungy, it's not socioeconomic, it's not racial, it's not education, it's none of that. 95% of these boys did not grow up with their dad. I don't know where he got this stat from. However, here's a fact check from Politico, which proved that nonsense like this has been stated before. What Abe Brown said doesn't reflect numbers from Tampa or Florida, let alone around the United States at any time. But people eat stuff like this up and started regurgitating nonsense about black fatherhood and conflating numbers for truly absent fathers and babies born out of wedlock. Just because a father is not married to his child's mother doesn't mean he's absent. They could be cohabitating parents in a very committed relationship. Just because the father is not living in the home with their child and not in a relationship with the mother of his child doesn't make him absent. According to the CDC, black men are nearly three times as likely as white men to have at least one child they don't live with. Some fathers, no matter their race, while living in the same home with their child and being married to the mother of their child, are nothing more than money providers and chauffeurs. And that's on the patriarchy and traditional gender roles. The same CDC data shows that black fathers are more likely to help our kids with homework, bathe our kids, have meals with our kids, etc. And while that data represents a relatively small sample size, what's abundantly clear is that the issue of black fatherhood isn't that of a lack of willingness or disinterest, let alone a symbol of black culture. How could it be black culture when, as it currently stands, white women are the fastest growing demographic to have babies out of wetlock in America? Even with that, as you can see, that rate for white women compared to Hispanic and black women respectively is still lower. However, based on the trajectory, this number for white women will be that of black women in a few generations. There are clearly a lot of factors in this and links between education and socioeconomic status when it comes to parent-child family dynamics, in addition to mass incarceration. Shout out to mixed and blended homes, those with same-sex parents, underrepresented single fathers, and of course, underappreciated single mothers, one raised me with the assistance of my sisters and my aunts. For Rebel HQ, I'm Jeff Wiggins. My architect knows Japanese. For more from the Young Turks, stay right here. If you want to see content from yours truly, click on the hashtag below. I can also be found on all socials at he gonna be all right. Thanks for watching.